We can sense voltage in a circuit using a multimeter by connecting two probes at two different points in a circuit. That is basically contact voltage detector. As far as the error is concerned, there also exists non-contact voltage detector. You can simply buy one, but that's not the point of this video, right? Without further delay, let's jump right into it. All you need is a 4 general purpose transistor, in my case BC547, 1 mega ohm resistor, 100 kilo ohm resistor, 39 kilo ohm resistor, 1 5 kilo ohm potentiometer, a 5 millimeter red LED, a 9 volt battery since we want to make it portable and a battery connector. The star of this circuit is a BC547 BJT. Before we get into the project, let's get ready with the basic bipolar junction transistor or BJT as short. Talking about BJT, it is classified as NPN and PNP. The arrow mark at the emitter indicates the flow of current. BJT can act as a switch as well as an amplifier. Here in this project we will deal with the switching property. For the LED to glow in this circuit, a minimum base current is required which acts as a switch. BJT are also known as current control devices. Higher base current can destroy the transistor, so we need to add a current limiting resistor. We need to make sure that the collector current does not exceed the rated value. To calculate beta, we need to go through the data sheet where it will be written as current gain, which is found out to be 110. Now let's calculate IB. R2 can be easily calculated by Kirchhoff's voltage law in the lower mesh. We need to consider the voltage drop across the base emitter junction and collector emitter junction for the calculation. This type of configuration is called common emitter configuration. Similarly, common base and collector also exist, but that will be a topic for a different video. Enough of theory, let's try it out. This time I'm using a PNP type transistor for the demonstration. Connect the cathode of the LED to the emitter of the transistor and the anode to 220 ohm resistor. Now connect a 1 kilo ohm resistor to base and use a jumper wire for the collector to ground. Now connect the battery for the test and the test circuit is complete. Put the blue jumper from the base to 9 volts and you will see the LED glow. The circuit for the EMF detector has 4 transistors connected in cascade form. Connecting transistor in cascade form helps the gain to increase. The overall gain is a product of individual gain of each transistor which in turn lights the LED. It's always a good idea to build a circuit on a breadboard. Connect the resistor to the respective emitter pin. Place the potentiometer in one side of the breadboard. Now connect the jumper wire from the emitter of the first transistor to the base of the second. Use another jumper to make a connection between the emitter and base of the second and third transistor respectively. Do the same for the remaining. Now use a jumper to connect the emitter of the last transistor to ground. Connect one loose jumper from the base of the first transistor which will act as an antenna. Now power the circuit. Once you know everything is working, it's time to make it permanent. Score down the PCB having 13 cross 8 holes. Place the transistor as per the schematic. By the way, if you're confused by now, you can always check out my instructable. You can find part lists and clear pictures over there. If you're a beginner at shouldering, then go check out Colin's video. I'll put a link in the description. Strip two single stranded wires and shoulder them on the LED. Time to pack everything in an enclosure. Drill two holes, one for the LED and the other for the momentary switch. Shoulder the momentary switch to the board, connect the battery and the project is complete. Test it for checking the flow of electricity over a wire. Warning, do not try it over wall sockets. This project is not very efficient but fun to have one. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next week.